So now that 2021 is out of the way, it's time for me to count down my top 10 favorite films of the year. I'm sorry that it took me a while to get this video out to you guys. I don't really have a good reason for that. <laughs> it just kind of took me a while. But you guys know that I always love making these videos at the end of the year, and I didn't want this year to pass without me telling you guys what my favorite films were. So here we are. Let's talk about the year 2021 in film. Honestly, I was kind of let down by it as a whole. I still think we haven't gotten a strong year for film since 2019. That being said, you know, there was a question of if movie theaters would even open back up this year. And gratefully they did. So we got to start seeing a lot more of those blockbuster, tentpole studio movies that we really didn't get much of in 2020. So I am thankful for that and for the fact that people actually started going to the movies. But there certainly were some great films and I am really excited to talk about them. As always, these are just my personal picks. They might be completely different from yours, but they're just the ones that resonated with me the most throughout the year. And a quick disclaimer before we jump into this, I haven't seen every film that came out last year. I always try to see everything, but there's always one or two films that I'm not able to get to until the next year. King Richard was one of the big ones that I haven't seen yet. So just in case you're like, why doesn't he have this movie on here or this movie? It might be because I haven't seen it yet, but I'm planning on doing so in the future. And with that out of the way, let's get into my honorable mentions. These are films that I really enjoyed and that I thought were great, but didn't quite make the cut for my top 10. First of which is Pig, featuring a terrific performance from Nicolas Cage. It seems like he's getting a lot more recognition now than he used to, and I am all for that. In the Heights was such a great summer movie musical. I love the style and the energy that John M. Chu brought to this film. And before this, I was actually pretty unfamiliar with the musical, but the movie converted me into a huge fan. Belfast was a beautifully directed movie, and I really enjoyed watching the story play out through the eyes of a young boy played masterfully by Jude Hill. Don't Look Up, Adam McKay's hilarious satire that doubles as a very important movie about the climate crisis. And finally, No Time to Die, which I thought was a great send-off for Daniel Craig as the character of James Bond. It was surprisingly emotional, but had some of the best action sequences in the entire franchise, and I thought it was the perfect ending for my favorite James Bond of all time. All those movies are great, and you definitely should see them if you get the chance to. However, they didn't quite resonate with me in the same way that these next 10 films did. So without further ado, let's talk about my 10 favorite movies of 2021. It seems like not a lot of people are talking about The Suicide Squad right now, but this movie was some of the most fun that I had in a theater in all of 2021. James Gunn went absolutely off the rails and just gave us a movie that does not care about anything. These are some of the best characters that we've ever had in the DCEU. I love the chemistry between John Cena and Idris Elba, the scene where they go through the village and just wipe everyone out, constantly trying to one-up each other was so entertaining. And this is probably one of John Cena's best characters. It's no wonder that Peacemaker is getting a spin-off series. David Dasmielchen as Polka Dot Man had a lot of great laughs in the film. Ratcatcher 2 was surprisingly emotional, but one of the biggest standouts for me was Sylvester Stallone as King Shark, who was just so funny. And speaking of James Gunn, it's great to see him just kind of let loose with this movie because I love what he did with the Guardians films, but with those movies he's always kind of been confined by Disney and having to make it family friendly. But here Warner Brothers just kind of let him do whatever he wanted. This movie is bloody and gory and irreverent and I just had such a great time with it. In terms of pure, unadulterated fun, this movie gave me everything I wanted. Pablo Lorraine Spencer is a film that wonderfully captures the tragic life of Princess Diana. Over the course of three days, we see just how every aspect of her day-to-day -day life was regimented and controlled by those around her, and how little freedom she had to just be who she wanted to be, free from the scrutiny of the royal family. Kristen Stewart gives what is probably my favorite performance of the year. This was such a brilliant casting decision, because she really brought her experience in the public eye to playing Princess Diana. And my god, the cinematography is impeccable. It looks and feels exactly like 1991. And it's one of those movies where you could just tell by looking at it that it was shot on film. Spencer is a devastating look at what the royal family can do to someone, and it really did leave an impact on me. Who would have thought that John Krasinski would become one of the best new voices in the horror genre? A Quiet Place Part Two is one of the best sequels I've seen in quite some time, and for me, it took the concept of the first movie and just improved it on every level. 
I still feel like the opening sequence is worth the price of admission alone, where you get to see day one of when the monsters arrived on Earth. It is absolutely enthralling. That entire sequence having on the edge of my seat, and that same tension carries on through the entire rest of the film as the Abbott family finds themselves in increasingly life-threatening situations. There's so many great set pieces in the film, but what I really love about it is that the characters always take center stage, and they're never overshadowed by the monsters or the spectacle. Noah Jupe, Melissa Simmons, Emily Blunt, they're all great in the film. I also really like the addition of Killian Murphy in this movie. He was terrific. And considering the fact that none of them are really saying anything throughout the movie, it's pretty impressive that they're as good as they are. A Quiet Place Part 2 totally surpassed all of my expectations, and I'm really excited to see where the story goes in the future. John Krasinski, please keep making movies like this. If you know anything about The Last Duel, you probably know that it didn't do well at the box office. Nobody saw this movie, which was really unfortunate to me because I do think this is one of the best films of the year. And it's also probably really Scott's best film since The Martian. It's a riveting story about betrayal and power told through multiple perspectives in a similar filmmaking style to Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon, where the truth is uncovered through the eyes of three different characters, which is so fascinating and I really enjoyed trying to pick apart this story through these different perspectives. Not to mention the film has some very relevant themes and is an extremely compelling look at sexual assault and just how hard it is for women to come forward and share their stories, especially in the public eye. Everyone across the board is great in this movie, but the real standouts for me were Adam Driver and Jodie Comer, who just feel so real. The film also has one of the most exciting third acts of the year. Ridley Scott just goes full on gladiator with a terrific battle sequence. The Last Duel is an amazing film that really deserved better at the box office, so please, if you're able to, go out and support it, buy the 4K or the Blu-ray, because we just don't get a lot of films like this nowadays, and I really hope that changes at some point. Spider-Man No Way Home had a lot to live up to. It seems like over the past year or so, fans were just throwing out these crazy theories and speculations as to what would happen in the film. And with all these mammoth expectations, I didn't know if the movie would live up to it. But it did. Being a huge Spider-Man fan, there were many times throughout this movie where I could not believe what I was looking at. And the fact that they pulled it off as well as they did completely blows my mind. But aside from all that, a big reason why I love it is that they didn't lose sight of Tom Holland's Peter Parker. And they gave him a great Spider-Man story with emotional weight and stakes Something I've wanted to see in the MCU for so long. This is the best we've ever seen Tom Holland. He gives an amazing performance here, as well as some of the villains who return. Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. Two people I never would have thought would return to play these characters. Both gave amazing performances. It's definitely my favorite out of John Watts' trilogy. And overall, it just made me happy. And it reminded me why I love Spider-Man. Part of the reason why this year was kind of a letdown for me is that I didn't get a lot of movies that really made me feel. You know, I wanted that emotional punch out of some stuff that I really just didn't get. But that was certainly not the case with Coda, which is without a doubt the most emotional experience I had with a movie this year. This is such a beautiful, heartfelt story and one that really snuck up on me because I didn't realize until towards the end of the film just how much I love these characters and I wanted everything to work out because I really did care about them. Amelia Jones is an absolute superstar in this movie. This role required a lot from her in terms of learning sign language and learning how to sing, and she did it all marvelously. The movie is also kind of educational. It really shows you what that experience is like being the only hearing person in a deaf family. I also really love the music angle to this movie, how Ruby is trying to convey her passion for singing to her family, but it's just really hard for them to connect with it, and it takes the course of the movie for them to really understand it. Please see this movie, get Apple TV somehow, sign up for a free trial. If you're a fan of good writing, good acting, you will enjoy it. And if you wanna see a movie that makes you feel, this is it. It was a really good year for comic book movies, but for me, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings was the best of the bunch. This movie totally surprised me. These just might be the best action sequences that Marvel has ever done. The scaffolding fight, the bus fight, the third act sequence with Tony Lung. But the movie also had this great emotional core to it with the hero and the villain. And that was what really anchored the film for me and made it more than just your average superhero film. 
Simu Liu embodies this character perfectly, and obviously the movie was very inspired by martial arts films of the past, and it felt like there were people behind the scenes that just wanted to elevate it beyond a typical Marvel movie. And man, did they succeed. I love Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, and I can't wait to see more of the character in the future. Steven Spielberg became the greatest director of all time a while ago, so with his new remake of West Side Story, he's essentially just showing off at this point. In my view, this is the best thing he's done since Lincoln. I adore what he did with his take on the classic musical, and I actually think it's better than the original. It just feels so much more lived in and vivid and real. Even though he captured the essence and feel of this story from the 1960s, he made it translate seamlessly into 2021. And a lot of that is because there is a terrific emphasis on practical sets, real locations, and backdrops that bring this world to life. Absolutely stunning cinematography from Janusz Kaminski, hands down the best looking film of the year. There's just a scope and scale to this film that makes it feel so immersive. It was really disheartening that it did so poorly at the box office because we just don't get movies like this nowadays. And if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I promise you will not be disappointed. Speaking of worlds that feel lived in and immersive, The Green Knight is one of the best fantasy films that I've seen in quite some time. This movie has such a terrific blend of practical effects and CGI that make it feel like a real, tangible, living, breathing world. Dev Patel is fantastic and I found this story so engaging, watching Sir Gawain go on a quest to put his cowardly ways behind him and obtain his honor by finally becoming the knight he was meant to be. I'm certainly not the first one who has said this about this film, but it's visually stunning. It has this very surreal, dreamlike quality to it, and there are several shots in the film that have been etched into my mind. But what I love most about The Green Knight is that it is so weird. It does not care what you think about it. Similar to another film by David Lowry, A Ghost Story, there is absolutely nothing I love more than seeing a film where a director was able to execute his vision with nothing standing in his way, that completely goes against everything that focus groups and studio heads have decided will get people into theaters. That's just a pure, uncompromised creative vision. The Green Knight is an absolutely terrific example of that, and I hope David Lowry makes movies for a long time. So we've now gotten to my pick for the number one movie of 2021, and since I haven't said it yet, you can probably guess what it is by now. But anyway, this is the film that reminded me why I go to movies. There was not a single thing about this film that disappointed me. I was totally entranced on the screen from start to finish. And for me, in terms of what I look for in a cinematic experience, this film gave me everything I wanted. Dune is my favorite movie of the year. I understand the criticisms. I get that it's not a complete story. I understand that there's not a ton of heart and humor in it. I understand all of that. However, I was just transported into this world for two and a half hours, and I can't say that about any other film this year. Being a big fan of the source material, I really could not have asked for a more faithful adaptation of Frank Herbert's story. It was done with such majesty and care and authenticity. It's masterfully directed. Denis Villeneuve continues to outdo himself in terms of making experiences that were designed to be experienced on the biggest screen with the loudest sound possible. And I was absolutely in awe of just how grand this movie felt. It just feels so massive in a way that I feel like we don't typically get anymore. Hans Zimmer's score, Greg Frazier's jaw-dropping cinematography, the performances from Timothy Chalamet, Oscar Isaac, Rebecca Ferguson, Everything just came together so beautifully on this film. Dune is a masterfully directed, terrifically well shot, incredibly well crafted piece of cinema. I cannot wait to see where the story goes and where Villeneuve will take it next. And it just gave me everything I want out of a movie. And for all those reasons, it is my favorite film of 2021. All right, so those are my favorite movies of the year. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to any of you who have stayed subscribed to me and been watching my channel throughout the year. I really do appreciate that. I know, as usual, I'm a bit on and off in terms of how consistent I'm uploading over here, but for any of you who actually sit down and want to click on my videos and listen to me talk about film, I just 
that means the world to me. So thank you so much for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this year brings. I think we have a lot of good stuff coming and I'm excited to be making more videos in the future. I would also love to hear what your favorite films of 2021 were. So please feel free to leave them down in the comments below, but also be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.